How much did you pay for a Big Mac? $16 for a burger, a large fry, and a drink. It's, it's just crazy. How much did you pay for a Big Mac? Uh, one man on Twitter posted signage from a Connecticut McDonald's where he paid $18 what? for a Big Mac combo meal. The man said it was a rest stop. It's located in uh, one of the country's wealthiest towns in upscale Fairfield County. It also charges $19 for a quarter pounder what? with cheese and, and a bacon meal or a quarter pounder deluxe. And another example, the cheeseburger usually found on, on the dollar menu is going for $17 for two. I thought that that, that stuff was universal I, with, yeah, with minor I, changes. Right? That stuff. It doesn't seem legal. One McDonald's branch charging $18 for a Big Mac meal. That is not going over well. Ashley, even to me, that seems an extremely expensive meal for <laughs> McDonald's. I get there's a labor shortage. I get there's wage increases and a number of other things, but... Sixteen dollars. All right, guys. So we got to talk about a pretty hilarious story here from the Washington Post about the Biden administration and Democrats and how they are freaking out about the fact that TikTokers and social media influencers are posting their expensive McDonald's meals on the internet because they believe that this is the reason why people think that Biden's poll numbers, specifically on the economy, are bad okay so again it's not the reality of the situation that people facing here in this country when it comes to inflation no 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 that's not it they are being misinformed by tiktokers in regards to how out of control inflation is and that is why people feel like biden's poll numbers are bad again it's not the actual state of the economy that's an illusion <laughs> what you're feeling is an illusion no, no no you've been tricked and bamboozled by social media influencers <laughs> So, yeah, they are freaking out about this, okay? They are in fear over people exaggerating the economic problems in this country. And they are trying to do something about it. And I want to go over this hilarious article from the Washington Post and show you guys some of the videos that they are freaking out about. Because, again, this just is another example of what I tell you guys about how Democrats uh, roll, right? They think that their constituents are dumb, right? They think that you are stupid, okay? They always piss on your leg and tell you it's raining, okay? They always say the sky is red instead of the sky being blue, when clearly, obviously, it's blue. No, 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 it's something else, right? Don't believe what you see. Don't believe what you feel. Don't believe, you know, uh, your wallet when you go into the grocery store and you see that everything is more expensive. No, no, no. That's misinformation, right? That's right-wing <laughs> disinformation, according to these people, okay? So, while further ado, I want to read a little bit about the Biden White House and their panic over the fact that you have people on social media posting about their $16 Big Macs. And then I'm going to show you guys some of the videos and we're going to get into this. So, let's let's get into it. On December 20th, 2020, uh, Topher Olive went to a McDonald's in the town of Post Fall, Idaho, and ordered a limited edition smoky double quarter pounder BLT with fries and a Sprite. The meal cost $16.10, and he posted a receipt on TikTok. Even though he had ordered a novelty item, Olive's video about a $16 McDonald's order went viral, racking up hundreds of thousands of views at the McDonald's revenue report recently. The same post went viral again earlier this month with at least a half dozen news outlets, including the Washington Examiner, the New York Post, and Newsmax picking up the story of Olive's pricey patty. One YouTube video from this month with 2 million views inaccurately describes it as a Big Mac meal that costs $16. Post or Reddit, the conservative site Twitchy and elsewhere tied the cost to uh, President Biden's economic management inflation. The theory went had gotten so out of control that the price of fast food burger was <laughs> approaching $20. <laughs> yeah, so again, just listen to the Washington Post framing on this, right? They're, they're basically trying to say, well... This guy didn't really order a Big Mac. He ordered a specialty sandwich. So therefore, uh, you know, what people are talking about in regards to prices going up and how McDonald's has basically become unaffordable, it's just misinformation, right? You're exaggerating. Again, this is the way they're trying to frame it here, right? This is what they're trying to do. These stories soon reach the White House Office of Digital Strategy, which tracked the meme as one of many exaggerated examples of the nation's economic woes. According to a White House official speaking on the condition of anonymity to reflect 
internal discussions. In reality, inflation has been steadily subsiding. And last week, the government reported price hikes had eased yet again in October. The average Big Mac nationally as of this summer cost $5.58, up from $4.89, or roughly $0.70. Cents. Before Biden took office, according to an index maintained by The Economist, that is more than 10%, <laughs> but it's not $16. Okay, so let's go ahead and play some of the videos here that the Biden White House is concerned about, okay? Because, again, um, they're saying that, well, what people are experiencing is just exaggerate, right? <laughs> Exaggerating on social media. And this is the type of stuff that the Biden White House is concerned about. Take a look. Biden, I know you have a lot on your plate right now, but I heard you were reducing inflation. And can we, can we talk about this? Can we talk about this? Because what's going on here? This is absurd, egregious even. And they act like they're the war <laughs> ration board with the sauces over here. If we're going to reduce inflation, let's do it where it matters, underneath the golden arches. Let me show you just how bad inflation is here in the United States. A McDonald's Big Mac is now going to cost you $18. McDonald's insane new prices charge supersized toll on Bidenomics. $18. $18. That also gets you the fries and the soda combo, but <laughs> back in my day, Big Macs were only $9 for the whole combo, but really they were. No okay boomer here. The hikes sure look like they come thanks to painful and persistent inflation driven by President Biden's terrible economic policies economic policies that overall are 15% higher since Joe Biden came into office on essentials like food, energy, they're closer to 25%. Equivocally, think of it as having slashed the income of a typical family by close to $5,000. This ties back into the, you may not be making less right now, but it feels like you're making less. I am here at the McDonald's drive-thru to show you absolutely insane the inflation has been over the last few years. If you look at the menu here, What's notable is that they have a one, two, and three dollar menu. And if you look, none of the items are even a dollar anymore. How do they call this a one, two, and three dollar menu? A bunch of these items that are on here, like McChicken, McDouble, that sort of thing, I used to order them all the time back when I was in high school. And that was only a couple years ago. And they were always a dollar. McChicken, McDouble, large drink, all those things have always been a dollar. Nowadays, their McChicken is 319. McDouble, 359. That is literally 320% to 350% inflation in three to four years. If this trend continues, it's reasonable to think a McChicken in three years could be $6 and a McDouble, seven. Can somebody tell me what's going on with McDonald's? No, I can't, but I want to know where you live, where your double quarter powder meal isn't almost $12 and your Big Mac meal isn't almost 11 Well, it's 10 but <sighs> when you upgrade to that large drink. And $10 on a sandwich with one piece of meat and some bacon. Look at this right here. This beautiful little thing cost me $10. There ain't no french fries. I got a double bacon quarter pounder in my bed. Alley. Yeah, so you say that, you heard that. Now, regardless of what the Washington Post says, right, and how they try to, again, tell you that, um, you know, it's raining when they're really pissing on your leg, which is exactly what this whole article is. Looking at those people's TikToks, there's no excuse for any part of this country to be charging upwards of $10 for a meal at McDonald's, okay? I'm so serious, right? I'm so serious. The fact that it costs over $10 to get a Big Mac and some fries in a drink is ridiculous. Now, here's the thing. There may be some parts where, yeah, okay, it might be $16, maybe almost $20. And that could be in parts of the country where you have, you know, an extremely high rate in inflation or the cost of living is super high, whatever, like California. But still, what you're seeing is the prices increasing to the point where, again, it is ridiculous. And people are sounding off about it. People are making videos about it because they feel like these price increases are hurting them. But again, instead of acknowledging that reality, they want to basically dismiss it as, well, this is not really what reality is, okay? And that this is a lie being told that is hurting Biden, okay? So let's read a little bit more about this, okay? Let's read a little bit more. The Big Mac conundrum reflects what Biden aides and senior Democrat officials regard as one of the most vexing challenges ahead of the 2024 presidential election, even as inflation has fallen to a manageable 3%. And although uh, the labor market has remained hot amid 
uh, strong growth. Voters still don't like the economy and they blame the president. Yeah, well, when inflation has grown as much as it has grown over the past two years, just because inflation has cooled down, right, according to uh, their uh, statistics, government statistics, uh, that doesn't mean that people are okay with that, especially considering how wage growth has not kept up with the rate of inflation. So if you are um, objectively poor because your wages haven't kept up with inflation, then of course people aren't going to feel that the economy is good, even if the rate of inflation has failed, right? Now, we're not experiencing uh, deflation, right? So prices aren't falling. 3% inflation still implies that prices are climbing. And as long as prices continue to climb and they don't fall, and especially considering how they rose so quickly over the past two to three years, people are definitely going to feel like, okay, yeah, the economy's bad, that things are overpriced. Because people aren't used to prices rising so quickly, okay? we, I mean, before in the past, you know, under Trump, we had inflation rate about 2%, okay? I mean, again, prices were not rising as quickly. So now that prices are rising a lot more quicker, of course, people don't feel like inflation is bad, that prices are out of control because they are. Again, this is just, this is elitist garbage right here for the Washington Post, right? This is straight up elitist garbage. Overcoming this discontent and understanding what is driving it has become a central priority of the White House and Democratic lawmakers, leading to a fierce debate among economists, pollsters, and other experts. Former President Donald Trump has made ridiculing Biden's economic performance one of his main campaign messages, raising the stakes for the White House even more. The administration continues to be torn over how to respond to the negative polling. On one hand, administration officials say Biden deserves more credit for his economic accomplishments, a booming job market, substantial wage increases for low-income workers, rapid economic growth that they say are the result of his 2021 economic stimulus and other legislative measures. Measures. Americans won't give Biden credit for those accomplishments if the president and his allies don't talk about them. Many strategists and party officials argue, well, it doesn't matter how much you talk about them and people don't feel like the economy is great. They're basically, it's not going to work. And I don't understand why these people haven't figured that out yet, right? They have not figured it out. Again, it's it's mind boggling. It really is. When asked about young voters economic frustrations with the president by CNBC on Monday, Treasury Secretary Janet L. Yellen said, quote, I'm aware of that. And I think it's our job to explain to Americans what uh, President Biden has done to improve the economy. All right. So let's go down here even more. At the center of this debate is a dispute over to what extent social media and perceptions rather than real conditions in the economy are <laughs> fueling voters angst. Again, what the liberal media, the elitist liberal media is telling you is that, no, what you're feeling is not actually what you're feeling, right? It's made up, right? It's not real, okay? Just like the border crisis, it's not real. The crime crisis is not real. None of the stuff that you're feeling in your everyday life, life is not real. It's made up. It's MAGA disinformation. There is at least some evidence that the digital world is painting a bleaker picture than the statistics support. Brendan Gaham, a digital marketing consultant, said that data from TikTok shows conversations around, quote, uh, hashtag economic uh, collapsing reached a fever pinch this uh, past month and generated tons of millions of views. Even as inflation markedly cool, growth remained robust and, and unemployment stayed near record lows. TikTok abounds with misleading or inaccurate information about the economy. One video in September with 2.3 million views said that there was a silent depression. Another uh, video from this month with 2.1 million views claimed incorrectly, quote, we have the lowest purchasing power we've ever had in American history and asserted that inflation adjusted wages are lower than they were then. Disposal income per capita is in fact more than five times uh, larger than it was in 1930, adjusted for inflation. A third video with 1.8 million views similarly falsely claimed, quote, we, are, we currently are making less than the height of the Great Depression. TikTok and YouTube have dozens of videos of this kind making uh, similarly false claim. Brian Hanley, CEO of Bullish Studio, a financial media company that works with content creators, said that it is going to be difficult for Biden to overcome this narrative no matter how many charts and numbers aides provide. Quote, we live in a reply guy world and dunking on people, including the president, is what's going to get even more engagement and more <laughs> engagement equals more money, Hanley said.
Some comments think these kinds of comments are not just wrong, but dangerous. They have been astounded by poll data showing a Biden's economic approval and surveys of consumer sentiment where results during the Biden administration are similar to the Great Recession. When unemployment was close to three times as high as it is now, these economists fear that these exaggerated stories will ultimately lead to a worse outcome, perhaps helping Trump win re-election. And that it is vital to make clear that this remains, by many measures, one of the best recoveries in modern U.S. history. Uh, they also express confusion over why consumers continue to spend so heavily if the pessimism is driven by economic insecurity. <laughs> the White House official uh, said the administration is working with TikTok creators to tell positive stories of Biden's economic stewardship while also working with social media platforms to counter misinformation. <laughs> Yeah, so again, what you have here, again, is uh, Biden, the White House, saying, well, we're going to censor people, right? That, that's what working with uh, the social media platforms to counter misinformation means, right? They, they're going to try to censor people's views and try to have your post flag if you say that you feel like we're in a uh, great recession, right? Which is funny because we were in a recession, okay? Like, we were in a recession, two consecutive quarters of uh, GDP uh, decline, right? We were in a recession and then the White House changed the definition. And then the mainstream media came out and said, no, we're not in a recession. So again, when you're changing the uh, definition of economic terms, right? When you are always putting out misinformation and disinformation about the economy, uh, I'm talking about the White House. Uh, I don't understand how you can be so mad when, you know, people on TikTok are basically just expressing how they feel about the economy, Right. Now, whether or not it's true or whether it matches reality is not up for the government to decide. That's up for the people to decide because that's their reality. That's the world they live in. They feel like it is the Great Recession or the Great Depression. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But again, the gaslighting here is amazing. The elitism is absolutely amazing. It's in your face. Quote, folks have bought burgers at the wrong price throughout the history of time. And that includes economists. At all other times, we would look at our burger and our bill and say, wow, I wish I'd done more addition and subtraction, said Justin Wolfers, an economist at the University of uh, Michigan. At the present moment, though, we instead say, wow, I hate this economy. Folks are uh, viewing everything they buy through that lens. Again, you got to understand what these people really don't understand is that we we have not experienced this type of inflation since what the 70s and the 80s right so when people experience this stuff for the first time yeah people <laughs> feel like that you know everything is terrible because yeah the economy is terrible right you you are living in a terrible economy when you're paying seven and nine hundred dollars more per household than you were uh prior to the current president getting in the white house right when your wages have not kept up with inflation, when you are objectively poor, when you objectively can't buy as many things, you can't tell these people that, oh, well, you're, you're just making it up, right? That your reality is just a perception. It's not actually reality. Again, that's not a message that's going to play over well, right? What will actually help the Biden administration is to acknowledge the fact that, yeah, the economy is not in good shape and we're doing whatever we can do to try to uh, fix it, but that's not what they're saying. Instead, they're telling you that you're stupid. Right? You're stupid and you're spreading misinformation slash disinformation for simply stating your reality on the internet and you're helping Trump win, right? It's dangerous, right? It's dangerous. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black and sort of perspective. Peace.